Hello, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at the jump through. We have the opportunity to do our first jump through when we enter into primary series. So we'll start in downward facing and we'll go through the steps or progressions to build up our jump through practice. Just keep in mind that it takes a while to, to feel a sense of coordination in the jump through. One thing that I often say is almost anyone can jump. However, can you control the jump? And that is always the defining factor. So in the jump through, I tend to recommend prioritizing the second half of the jump through to create that sense of steadiness as you're going through the arms. So for the first steps, it's not going to be big fancy movements because we need to understand how to center our weight over the arms to create resistance to have this aspect of floating happening, which entails finding our center of gravity and learning how to resist through the arms, positioning our body properly to feel this momentary floating action. If we just barrel our way through, we may miss an opportunity to really activate the arms to then progressively build up strength to learn how to resist and in a sense, coordinate and hold our, our body weight. So that's why I think starting in a step-by-step -step fashion is gonna be the best way to approach the jump through in the beginning. So let's go into our downward facing position. And in downward facing, we want our hands shoulder width apart, the fingers spread nice and wide. And you want to feel a sense that you're stretching along through the arms. And you want that stretch through the arms to translate to the sides of the waist. Now, when we prepare to jump, it's always a good idea to lift the heels high and then to press back. The rib cage is going to descend back toward the thighs as I look between the hands. So when you're preparing to jump or step, you always want to look and see where you're going. That's very, very important. Now we're going to assimilate or act as if we're going to jump. However, for the first stage or the first progression, we're going to step, step to prioritize that second half of the jump through. Again, it's not a big fancy movement, but it's gonna help us to obtain the sense of connection through resisting through the arms to then find that floating action, even on a small scale through that second half. So from here, I'm going to act as if I'm going to jump, even though I will step. I'm going to lift the heels, take the rib cage back toward the thighs as I look in between the hands. And then from here, I'm going to step one foot to the opposite wrist. And then the other foot is going, or the other shin bone is going to cross the other foot behind the other wrist. And then I want to lift the heels toward my bottom, knees coming into the chest to then learn how to swing through, okay? Now, that second half part can still be quite challenging, but the key factor is to feel that resistance through the arms, and then that sucking in action of the knees lifting into the chest, but the heels lifting toward the bottom or the heels lifting toward the tailbone. That's super important to find that second half action so like I mentioned before, many people can jump forward, but it's always that second half that seems to be missed um, to create a connection from the beginning, the middle, to the very end. So let's try this again, or I will demonstrate again. I'm gonna stretch nice and long through the arms. This already helps me to feel activated through my arms. And I'm gonna lift the heels Bend the knees, look between the hands, step, step, knees to the chest, heels to the bottom to come through. Now this time I didn't extend the, the legs forward, but at least I had a nice soft landing. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the bottom or my tailbone will never come forward in this position. 
So that's a part of the center of gravity that we're working with. So the hands are here, but the bottom is always behind the arms. It's only essentially the legs that come through. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're learning how to coordinate the jump through. So this, as this aspect of step, step, helps you to just slow down that action and to feel that connection through the second half. When you step forward, you want your hips to be just slightly elevated uh, higher than your shoulders. Be careful of the hips sinking lower than the shoulders. Because again, when we jump, we want to feel as if the hips are just a bit higher, doesn't have to be extremely high, but a bit higher than the shoulders. So, in a more fluid action, I'm going to just go through the step-step progression one more time. So lifting the heels, bending the knees, looking between the hands. Step, step, heels toward the bottom to come through. Okay? Now the next progression would be to, to jump halfway, let the tips of the toes touch the floor, and then to do the same thing that I just demonstrated to prioritize that second half. So the jump, we will jump, but I'm going to allow the tips of the toes to land. One reason to do that is to slow down the jumping action forward. The reason for the tips of the toes is that I don't want the, I don't want the movement to be bottom heavy. When it's bottom heavy, that means we've lost our connection to the arms. So I still want that movement forward to be top heavy. What I mean by top heavy is I'm aligned over my arms much more than I am to my lower body. If the lower body sinks down, it's game over. Everything comes down toward the floor. So we have a momentary window of time to create this illusion of weightlessness but the positioning of the body is very important. So when the hips ride just slightly higher than the shoulders as we press through the arms, but also suck the knees into the chest, keep the heels toward the bottom, we're working with the center of gravity for that moment of time to feel this weightlessness as the bones stack to then work through. Of course, it requires strength. So to suck the legs in, that requires core strength to be stable, through the upper body, of course, requires arms, shoulders, and upper back and chest strength. However, with good technique, everything aligns really nicely for the right muscles to activate when you're working through the movement. So the second progression is a jumping forward just halfway, tip, tips of the toes touching the floor just for a moment. So I'm gonna lift the heels, press back to jump, tap the toes to then come through to try to find that floating action in the second half, okay? So when I tap the toes, it's only just for a moment, just to slow down the, the forward movement just a bit to really feel that my connection to my arms is still there. Remember, if the hips sink down, and I can demonstrate what that's like, for instance, if I jump, and my hips go here. I've lost all connection to my arms. That's why having a bit of elevation through the hips is really important. But when we're working with the center of gravity, we've got to draw everything in to really keep that connection over to the upper body. And again, it's just so ob in that moment of time, we're not trying to hold for a su super long time when we do this. So. One more demonstration here with the, the second progression. Lifting the heels, pressing back, rib cage back toward the thighs. Jump and tap the toes, sucking those legs in to come through. Only legs come through. Now, both for the first and second progression, there are a few issues that do come up. For instance, when the hips are a little bit blocked, we don't feel that we can fit through the arms. So that might be a point of contention <laughs> when you're trying to work on the jump through. And that's something that is very common in the beginning, that you don't feel that you can fit the legs through. So what I recommend there is to 
prioritize this sense of just coming down and letting the bottom come to the floor, and then just bring your legs forward one at a time. This is not a big fancy movement, and sometimes people don't always appreciate it, but these steps are really good at awakening the muscles and obtaining the coordination in the body in a synergistic way to approach the jump through in the future. Because again, if we don't strengthen the correct muscles or if we don't awaken the correct muscles, it'll never happen if we're not utilizing technique to its fullest capacity. So if we're unable to fit through the arms, even if I do the step, step progression, step, step, I can't fit through, what I usually recommend let the bottom come down, but land as softly as you can, even if it's one leg at a time coming through. That also, that negative action of coming down as you stay centered over your arms is a really important part of learning how to, to find the agility in that particular second half of the jump through, but also to awaken the arm strength. In a sense, we're learning to resist through the arms so the landing can be softer, which demands a bit of strength. So again, from downward facing, if I do the second progression, if I tap the toes, and then maybe I don't fit through, I can then let the bottom come down, and then one at a time, bring the legs through. What I always recommend is no matter to what degree you're jumping through, a mindful, attentive transition is always going to be the best transition. I've seen some people jump very high and not be able to control uh, the movement, and it doesn't seem so mindful. Remember, a mindful transition with good integrity is always going to be a connection to yoga. So sometimes we, we get caught up into making movements super fancy, but it's really about the attention that you bring to what you are doing, that's the most important thing. When we start to work with the jump through and connecting all the dots, the aspect of bringing the knees into the chest and the heels to the bottom is going to be super important here. So I'm going to continue to lift the heels, press back to jump, keeping that connection, those knees into the chest, to find that floating action all the way through. Because remember, with the jump through, there's a beginning. How you set it up is super important. What you do in the middle, but especially what you do at the end. We have to connect all three of those points to make it feel like there's a full connection from start to finish. That's one reason why I really recommend all these steps. Step one, to prioritize that second half. Step two, to get a little bit of a jump, but you still have to learn how to control in a, in a sense where you're bringing more momentum forward to then, with step three, to find the link between first part of the movement, second to the third part. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate our jump through again. Hand shoulder width apart, always have your fingers Spread nice and wide because that's going to be your base. Lift the heels, press back, look between your hands to jump. Heels to the bottom to come through. Remember, it's only the legs that come through. The bottom is always behind the arms. So if you're first starting out, I think it's always important to really get that first progression down to work on how you land. But, you know, I work with many students, and sometimes their egos don't always like that first progression, but I will tell you, it works so you can find that connection through your arms. Technique is very important, staying very attentive and mindful, being very honest with yourself with what steps you need to focus on. Try to progress yourself from stability to stability. And then as time progresses and strength progresses, then you'll start to naturally work into the next steps. High quality movement will always be the best approach. The more mindful, the better.